Hey everybody, it's Party Lead, and today we're going to be taking a look at some city building games that are due to release in 2019. There are 12 whole months worth of games to look forward to, and I'm going to be highlighting the 19 I'm most excited for. If you have any games you're excited for yourself, let me know in the comments down below. I'm always on the lookout for more games, and I keep an eye out for any suggestions that might be worth highlighting. Now, with no more time to waste, let's see what games we city building fans have to look forward to in 2019. Tropico 6 is going to release on the 25th of January 2019, and it gives us yet another chance to be the most caliente presidente of the Banana Republic Island of Tropico. For the first time in the series, as far as my memory serves, we're able to play on an archipelago, growing cities across multiple islands. This brings with it new challenges, of course, and we're also seeing plenty of new tools to help tackle said challenges. New transportation systems, a new approach to the tech tree, the option to steal world wonders and monuments for your own collection, palace customization, and more. Give rousing speeches to your citizens, have them killed in the street, or bribe them as necessary, all as you try to make your beautiful Tropico thrive. The games have always had an excellent sense of humor, and I do like my comedy the way I like my coffee, so I can't wait to become El Presidente again. Anno 1800 is releasing on the 26th of February 2019 and is taking this 20-year-old series back to its historical roots after a few games set in the near and far future. Set during the Industrial Revolution, we see the highs and lows of the era, all while managing resources, trade, research, tourism, and conflict. The warfare is limited to the naval variety, we've recently seen it in action and it does seem fairly involved for a city-building game, color me impressed. The inclusion of the New World as a potential destination and resource is also very interesting, and it brings with it a set of challenges unique to the discovery. New exotic resources, new people, new tasks. Go on expeditions, capture interesting animals to showcase at your zoo, find artifacts to showcase at your museums, and have fun customizing your displays for the citizens and tourists in your city. All that aside, Anno 1800 is about building and managing a city, from citizen happiness to complex production lines, all set against the very intriguing time period of the Industrial Revolution. I'm glad Anno is going back to a historical setting, and I can't wait to dive in. Dawn of Man is going to release on the 1st of March 2019, and it's the first of a few games we're seeing set during the earliest days of city building in this list. Dawn of Man begins at the earliest days of human settlements, taking your tribe from a hunter-gatherer society to one that is farming and domesticating animals. With access to an early build of the game, I've been able to dive in with both feet to really see how the game pulls off this intriguing time frame, and I've enjoyed every minute. From humble and slow beginnings, unable to hunt bigger game, and unable to stray too far from home during the winter, to great stone structures, massive farms, and massive populations as a result, Dawn of Man does a great job of embracing the limitations of the time period and letting you crash through them. With seasonal harvests and animal migration, as well as climate concerns, you're constantly just trying to survive and when you do, it really feels like you're making great strides. I'm a sucker for human history, so I think Dawn of Man is a very exciting city builder, very much worth playing. Foundation is set to release in Q1 of 2019, and there are some very fascinating mechanics that instantly drew me in. With early access to an early build of the game, I've been able to dive in here and really experience the most intriguing mechanics. Apart from resource and production line management, as can be expected, we're seeing some pretty neat mission systems that tie into unlocking buildings of higher tiers based on the category those missions are coming in from, whether they're military or religious or based on the laborers in your society. 
Now, as you go along with these missions, you're going to be unlocking structures such as weaponsmiths and mills, and they all become a part of your production lines. More impressively, you're going to be unlocking monument buildings. Now, these include the likes of castles, churches, monasteries, and your own Lord's Manor as well. Now, monuments are especially interesting here because you have very granular control over the size and capabilities of each. Using a very clever modular system, you're able to build your own monument using parts, and you can control just how much time and resources it'll cost to build as a result. If that isn't cool enough, the coolest part, in my opinion, is how the city itself comes to life. As the Lord, you're going to be zoning regions for a variety of things, including hunting, farming, tree cutting, and living. Now, the last of these is the most interesting. Your citizens will build and upgrade their own houses, and they'll do so organically in these residential zones. And that's the coolest, most interesting selling point of Foundation. It's this organic growth of the city, seeing houses get placed where they're needed rather than where you want them to be, seeing paths get carved out of grass by citizens looking for the shortest path between two points. This really makes the cities come to life with new challenges of their own. It forces you to work around citizen behavior rather than just being an omnipotent city planner who just plots things down perfectly and never has to look back or worry about things that you know, isn't your own blunder. Here you're working with the citizens rather than just telling them what to do to develop a living, breathing city. Plus, it's the most realistic representation of the haphazard city planning of the time period that I've seen. Definitely keep your eyes out for this one, and I'll certainly be covering it much more on this channel as we get closer to release. Atmosity is releasing on March 13th, 2019, and it is bringing a very fresh perspective on the sci-fi city building genre. All the standard expectations of a city builder exist, of course. Uh, resource management, taxes, traffic, citizens' needs, hundreds of buildings, and a story mode as well as a sandbox mode. What makes things interesting is this gravity-defying, inception-style approach to the whole ordeal. If the game takes advantage of this strange spatial challenge where gravity doesn't matter and you can build a city around a cube and you know, these weird shapes, and it creates some unique challenges and solutions out of that situation, that will really immediately set this game farther apart from almost all others in this list. Managing utilities and public transit can get especially interesting in, say, a cube, and having cities that connect end-to-end -end already make for a new set of challenges as the mere baseline byproduct of this approach. Plus, the developer puts out consistent updates, so that just adds to my excitement to see the dedication and the constant flow of information coming up on the website. This is a very unique take on the genre. It's definitely worth watching, and I really want to see how it behaves in action before I can pull a final call on this. So keep an eye out on this channel for, you know, early access playthroughs and reviews and stuff if I can get an early access key for sure. Lords and Peasants is due out sometime in 2019, and it seems to be an interesting blend of RTS and city-building gaming. The devs have been a little slow to post dev blogs lately, but a recent tweet suggests that we're going to be seeing updates a lot more frequently in the near future. Apart from standard city-building aspects that we can expect from a medieval city-builder like baking bread and building walls, we're also seeing a serious focus on warfare. Build siege engines, march troops to war, use formations to your advantage, fight choke point battles. Now, this isn't to say that combat hasn't been done in city builders before, but this looks like a core pillar of the game rather than an added element tacked on. Now, the game is looking quite nice, and I think it's pretty interesting that we won't just be building our cities in isolation. There will be NPC towns nearby, bandit camps, and up to 16 other players if playing in multiplayer mode as well. Now, citizens, of course, have their own needs and wants, aging and changing as they tend to in city builders, and trade and diplomacy are all important aspects of any given playthrough as well. I'm quite curious to see how the game goes about blending these two subgenres, and I'm extra curious to see how it works with multiplayer. Definitely keeping my eyes on this one. Industries of Titan is set to release sometime in 2019, taking us to Saturn's moon, Titan. This voxel graphic city builder looks absolutely stunning in its pseudo-cyberpunk aesthetic, and though we haven't seen too much gameplay, what we have seen has piqued my curiosity. We've seen FTL-style combat between ships, and we see an interesting degree of customization for these ships that are duking it out. Does this mean we're going to be seeing the same degree of customization for individual buildings, controlling what's going on inside, 
as well as in between buildings? Time will tell, but the steam page seems to suggest that we're actually managing the inner workings of our industrial complexes just as much as we're managing the interworkings of them. Now I'm quite curious to see how all these systems come together. It does seem like a fairly ambitious project, and the trailers thus far have been mysterious and intriguing enough to get me hooked despite knowing very little. Ancient Cities, due out sometime in 2019 after a delay to their earlier December 2018 deadline, is looking absolutely fantastic and is the second game in this list that starts off during the earliest days of city building. Set in the Neolithic era, we're going to be progressing through great early strides of human history while dealing with changing seasons, animal migration, opposing tribes, human immigration, and an ever-evolving and changing ecosystem. Politics, religion, social classes, and unique simulated attributes, desires, aspirations, and needs are all to be included, and if I'm honest, it sounds like a very tall order. If these systems come together nicely, ancient cities could provide a truly unique experience in this most fascinating time period. The developers have suggested that there will be a great deal of post-launch support if the base game does well, so here's hoping that the product is as interesting as it sounds. I am really looking forward to this one, and as somebody who backed it, I really want to see it succeed. The Architect Paris brings a very interesting angle to the city building genre and might be releasing sometime in 2019. Rather than building a city from scratch, in this one, you're tasked with improving the pre-existing city of Paris. Balancing political demands with the demands of the people, all while limited by the pre-existing conditions of the city, rivers, bridges, roads, and monuments. The city itself is divided into districts, with each district acting as a level of sorts. They all have their own requirements that need to be met, presumably to unlock the next district, until they get more and more challenging before finally fixing all Parisian problems. Part of the game has you going in to modify individual buildings on a micro level, using a blueprint system to build your own unique version of the city with countless possible aesthetics. Now, I've said it before and I'll say it again, it's going to be a big struggle for me as a lover of Haussmannian architecture and as somebody who is sometimes forgiving of unsustainable bylaws in favor of a city's aesthetics, but I guess the architect Paris is supposed to force such paradigm shifts on people, dealing with a real city with real city problems. I'm very curious to see how it all comes together in the end, and I'm certainly keeping my eyes on this one. The Settlers is looking to make a serious comeback in the fall of 2019, and it's going to bring with it the same intricacies that long-term fans of the series will be very familiar with. With some complex systems coming together, mimicking real-world supply chains, as well as some of the more traditional aspects of strategy games like going to war, the Settlers have always been a fun challenge with a distinct visual style that belies just how deep the mechanics go. We don't know too much about the game, but we've heard that there are going to be new victory mechanics, including the hosting of tournaments that attract tourists to watch battles between champions. I'm curious to see what else is going to be included in the package. I've always enjoyed these games, and The Settlers was among one of the first city builders I played, and it's been about 9 years since the last new full-fledged Settlers game. Seed is a very, very interesting looking game that has been in development since 2016. So it might release in 2019, though the developers are staying pretty tight-lipped about a release timeline. Not a traditional city builder by any means, Seed has you playing in a persistent MMO-style world where you are in charge of people, or seedlings in this game. The player is responsible for setting behaviors, or roles, and cities and communities grow as a result. A complex web of behaviors is built as different individuals interact with each other and grow various wants and needs, including the more fleeting ones such as love. Limited resources mean that trade between players is likely, as is war, and it sounds like the developers are inviting a whole metagaming mentality where faith and politics might take on their own meaning that players then reflect in their colonies based on this metagaming conversation. There are some very unique thoughts going on here, and the project is extremely ambitious. Both good reasons for highlighting it, I think. I'll be keeping an eye on development here. It is bound to be an interesting journey, and I'm very curious to see how it all ends up.
Depraved is a Wild West city builder currently in early access, hopefully looking to release sometime in 2019. The setting is certainly one that I haven't played in a city builder previously, and the inclusion of survival elements should make for an interesting take, especially considering just how dangerous the frontier was at this time. Shifting seasons, a day-night cycle, complex production chains, upgradable citizens, and bandit raids all seem to be important aspects of the game, and I'm definitely interested in seeing how the time period is depicted in a city builder. It was a very unique time in the history of the topic, and more variety is always welcome in this subgenre. There is, of course, the balancing of regular wants and needs of the people, but this was a very lawless time, and I want to see just how much that angle is embraced. Again, it's in early access right now, but I think I'll wait until closer to release before diving into it. Cliff Empire is yet another unique take on the subgenre currently in early access, hopefully releasing sometime in 2019 based on a developer update from late December of 2018. This sci-fi city builder is quite an impressive looking indie venture that limits your city building to the tops of cliffs and all the restrictions that come with it. Any given playthrough will have a variety of cliffs with their own properties such as sun exposure and wind levels, and you'll eventually run out of space on your starting cliffs, forcing you to grow and spread across multiples using complex transportation systems. Dealing with resources and production chains to help keep people happy is pretty standard in comparison to some of the more adventurous concepts we're seeing here, with the addition of building in space and orbital stations being planned for release. There's some really interesting stuff going on here, particularly when it comes to managing the minimal space each cliff gives you and dealing with how each cliff is subdivided, forcing you to choose how your city develops with more of a consideration for just how limited resources such as surface area are. I might dive into this one in early access as it is looking quite polished already and most seem to be enjoying the game in its current state. Definitely one worth watching. Flotsam is an extremely fun-looking city builder releasing in 2019. From the art style to the concept, right up to the name of the developers, Pajama Llama Games, Flotsam seems like a city builder looking to have a good time. Set after a cataclysmic event, you are building your city upon the watery remains of Earth, floating and sailing from place to place, picking up all manner of garbage and debris to try and build your new floating city up. The unique setting makes the game an intriguing one right off the bat. A floating ship city comes with its own challenges and obstacles, including all manner of sea creatures, salty water, and the fact that there's really nowhere to go if things go really wrong. I'm keeping my eyes on this one, there's lots of potential here. Buoyancy is planned for a Steam Early Access release in Spring of 2019, and hopefully it'll see a release shortly after, as I'm not typically a fan of long Early Access windows. Similar to Flotsam, Buoyancy is a water city building game, but this one takes a much more somber and realistic approach as you grow your floating city, move it around the waters in search of new opportunities, manage citizen needs and wants, harvest the waters and the resources it holds, and defend yourself against outside invaders. Tech trees, a pollution mechanic, and encounters between these moving water cities, including war, stand to make buoyancy a pretty interesting take on the water city building subgenre of the city building subgenre. I can't believe that there are two games that are so similar and yet so different coming about around the same time. I'm curious to see how buoyancy progresses through development, and I'll be keeping an eye on it during early access. Maybe I'll dive in in early access, maybe I'll wait until it's a little more polished to actually showcase the game properly. Metropolisim is a very ambitious indie project that is set to release sometime in 2019 and promises to be one of the most complex city simulations ever. With such lofty goals, you can bet I've got my eyes on this one. With populations up to 10 million people individually simulated with their own needs, wants, jobs, paths, and traffic problems, the scale of the game is insane, and an example given by the developers on the website 
of the level of depth includes how the police force is managed. So I'm going to just reiterate that to make it clear here. So in other city builders, you simply place a police station down. In Metropolisim, you'll be placing the stations, hiring the officers, and setting their patrols all yourself, truly managing every aspect of the simulation. Plus, there's promise of mod support and post-launch support for this passion project. I'm very excited to see how this goes along, and with the release in 2019, I'm looking forward to diving in with both feet. I'm a fan of ambitious concepts, and I sincerely hope this one succeeds. Hard Ancient Life is still waiting on an official release date, but a promising update from the developers gives me hope that we're going to be seeing it sometime in late 2019. Set during the birth of old Egypt, right up to the death of Cleopatra VII in 30 BCE, we're seeing a very interesting time period and setting being covered. Apart from standard city building mechanics that involve you taking care of a city and its people, we see the implementation of diplomacy, politics, faith, trade, war, and of course, ancient Egypt, monuments. Diplomacy and politics will make an interesting addition if it's more than just a mission system, and I'd love to see actual diplomacy affect your prosperity and trade and the likelihood of war with a neighbor. Religion is an obvious inclusion in this time period and place, and it'll ask you to please the gods in various ways, I imagine some darker than others. Now trade will supposedly be implemented in an interesting way, taking into account the value of goods based on geopolitics, supply and demand, like in the real world, and as far as warring is concerned, the developers have said that we'll be involved in attacking and defending cities. How that plays, we are yet to see any indication of, but this extremely ambitious city builder has me excited. I've wanted this since I last played Pharaoh and Cleopatra, those old Sierra city builders. Looking forward to it. Let's see if they pull this off. Citybound is another extremely ambitious project that has been a bit quieter lately, but might see a launch late in 2019 if the pace picks up. Another modern day city builder, this one has a few interesting approaches to crucial parts of the city building puzzle. For one, when it comes to growing a city, you actually go about creating plans and implementing them when you're ready. That is to say, every click doesn't actually change the city, instead letting you test various solutions to the next step in city development before you actually lay out the new roads and plots. It's a really nice implementation, it's a bit more representative of how city planning actually works in the real world. They don't just put roads down and hope it works as they put it down and then realize, oh, hold on a second, this road is too long. No, none of that. So it's a bit more realistic from a city planning aspect, and I like that it's considering that angle to city building. Now, on top of that, the game boasts a great degree of micro simulations. Every house has a plethora of needs, from happiness and tourism to work and groceries. Now, depending on needs, each member of the family actually physically travels from place to place where traffic sounds like a more realistic simulation than some other games where clipping through cars can often solve tricky intersections and traffic jams. This all sounds very complicated in appropriate ways, and I look forward to another challenging simulation. As a one-man passion project, it is quite an ambitious one, and like I've already said, I'm a fan of ambitious projects. So, let's see how this one goes. Ymir, which may or may not be how this title is pronounced, is currently in early access and will hopefully see a full release in 2019. Not only is this game visually quite stunning, striking some serious nostalgic bones, but it is impressively complex, combining city building and 4x gameplay on a multiplayer scale. The game is split into two views, a world view where diplomacy takes place and plots of land are claimed through expansion in one way or another, and then there's the city building view where you build a city while keeping in mind all the socio-economic demands and needs of your pig people. Global economics affect prices with supply and demand determining the value of your goods, and wars can be fought for conquest or out of sheer desperation when a competing empire ruins your economy by flooding the market and driving your profits down off of a certain product. Battles are fought in real time and occur on specific tiles in the world map where armies meet, and this allows others to join in and reinforce either side, or come in after the fighting is over and pick up the scraps and declare a victory for themselves. Now the game has an always online 24-7 MMO approach, but you can also play a classic mode where it's just a few friends playing over multiple sessions like in countless Paradox games. 
this one truly is quite unique in many ways, and the sheer scale of it from city to empire building makes it a must watch. I am definitely keeping my eyes on it with a hope to cover it closer to its full release after early access. I hope you enjoyed this set of city builders we have to look forward to in 2019. As always, I'm sure I've missed some other greats, so let me know in the comments down below if I've missed any of your most anticipated city builders, and I'll check them out, and let me know if any of the games here have caught your eye, and if there's anything that you have questions about, I'll try and answer them in the comments down below. As always, make sure you subscribe to this channel for more strategy gaming content, and I'd like to give a massive thanks to all of my channel members and patrons for supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Till next time, thank you all for watching, and cheers. Copy that.